uh, both purinucleoside analogs, cladribine and pentastatin, result in very high complete response rates. Uh, and patients will typically start to demonstrate hematologic responses relatively early in their treatment course, usually within the first month of treatment. Uh, and so the neutropenia that is sometimes seen either as a baseline feature of the disease or as a result of treatment, we usually start to resolve relatively early in the treatment cycle. Um, and that helps with you know, alleviating the risk of bacterial infections. Um, however, these drugs are very uh, immunocompromising, and so patients may still be at risk of viral infections or opportunistic infections. So we typically will provide um, antimicrobial prophylaxis, especially for HSV, VZV, uh, and PJP. So um, once patients have finished their therapy, uh, it is important to repeat a bone marrow biopsy uh, to demonstrate the depth of their response. Um, even patients who achieve a complete hematological response may have a significant amount of disease in their bone marrow um, at the completion of therapy. Uh, and it's hard to know um, what their prognosis is gonna be without doing that bone marrow biopsy. So in most of our patients, we recommend a repeat bone marrow biopsy uh, about four months after finishing cladribine uh, and uh, a repeat bone marrow biopsy uh, after completion of pentastatin, which takes about six months. So uh, end of treatment sampling uh, to see if patients have achieved a CR. Uh, we know that the patients who do achieve a CR tend to stay in remission longer than patients who have me measurable residual disease, uh, especially if there's more than 5% hairy cell leukemia in the bone marrow at the end of treatment. Patients who uh, are in remission may still be at risk of infection, uh, even with normal blood counts. And so we typically will see these people about every three months for uh, routine lab monitoring and infection monitoring uh, and with strict, strict instructions to call if they develop a fever or symptoms of infection. Well, to me, the most important thing for a community oncologist who's treating hairy cell leukemia is to recognize the potential risks of highly active drugs in the case of purine nucleoside drugs, late opportunistic infection, viral reactivation, pneumocystis pneumonia are of such a frequency that prophylactic antibiotics really need to be given with even a one-week therapy with a purine nucleoside analog. Uh, the community oncologist has a lot of experience already with rituximab, so in the second line setting, I think that they're very much capable of handling the potential toxicities. But again, a patient whose relapse is relatively early, within one to two years after initial therapy, or a patient who's had multiple relapses, or a patient whose disease is characterized by unusual features, such as extreme lymphocytosis, that kind of patient is probably better served in a specialty clinic that has access to investigational drugs and has experience, perhaps, in combining drugs that hit multiple targets.